necessary. Welcome Puran from One Planet. Um, I look forward to hearing your presentation. Okay, hey, thank you very much, Carrie, and uh, for, for inviting us here. And I'm here with a couple of colleagues, um, uh, Pete Anderson, who looks after our partnerships, and uh, Tash has joined us recently uh, to, to help us as well. And, and, and great to have Helen from Horsham on the call as well. So uh, I'll run through a few slides. Let me just share my screen now. And then um, hopefully you can see this. Is that, is that showing to everyone? Yeah. Uh, yeah. OK, great. So um, really what we've done with our One Planet platform is help people join the dots. And I'll explain why we think that is absolutely critical to creating a sustainable future or even a regenerative future. Um, and we now live in a new reality and we will need new thinking in order to solve the complex interconnected problems that we've got. And in order to do that, we also need new tools. Uh, so that's why we've built the oneplanet.com platform. Um, and for me, I've been working in sustainability for over 30 years now, and sustainability at the core of it is really an understanding that everything is connected. So for example, what we build determines how much we use our cars. If those cars are internal combustion engine cars, they're creating pollutants which are damaging our health. Um, it's also contributing to climate change. Uh, um, and supporting the oil industry, which also creates single-use plastics, which are ending up in the oceans, filling our fish up with plastics. If we choose to eat those fish, we're filling ourselves up with microplastics. In fact, it turns out now, I think the latest evidence is that we're all, all full of microplastics, and that's starting to affect our health, so it contributes to chronic inflammation, which underpins almost all disease, uh, so that's really worrying, but it's also killing uh, penguins, for example, on the other side of the world. So we're realizing that we do live on a small planet and that everything is interconnected. Our health is interconnected with the environment, interconnected with climate, interconnected with the economy. But we don't have the tools to visualize or manage those connections. Um, and so that's what we've set out to do. Uh, our platform is being used by a number of different councils and community groups. And we've also recently started um, working on a pilot with the South Downs National Park, which I will uh, um, explain a bit more on. But yeah, um, so it's built on a long, um, well, over 30 years of sustainability experience. I co-founded an environmental organization called Bioregional back in the early 1990s. Uh, we set up with colleagues, a couple of sustainable forestry businesses, a couple of organic farms, a couple of recycling companies. We were growing as an organization, needed new offices. And to cut a long story short, we ended up building the BEDZ, Bennington Zero Fossil Energy uh, Development in South London, which was the first zero carbon urban uh, development of 100 homes and community and office space. I lived there and worked there for 18 years. Um, I coined the term then one planet living. How can we lead happy, healthy lives within the environmental limits? of our one planet or within planetary boundaries uh, and led a process to identify 10 very simple principles, intuitive principles uh, to help us create sustainability strategies um, for companies, for cities, uh, for real estate developers uh, and led the international one planet living program for, um, for 18 years, working in over 30 countries, uh, working with companies like B&Q with their one planet home strategy, uh, working on a, um, putting in strategies for about 30 billion US dollars of zero carbon development, about 10 billion dollars of that has got built out, everything from tiny homes in Australia to um, to the extension to Disneyland Paris. I, I could talk for hours about each of these projects um, uh, and anyone interested, I, I, I can send a link to find out more about those projects. But we also wrote the sustainability strategy for the London 2012 Olympics, so that was called the One Planet Games. Um, and my colleagues held the first workshop at the United Nations in 2011, bringing together all our One Planet Living partners um, to with the Colombian government to propose what became the UN Sus Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with. So, so I'm very proud that the framework I created actually is um, the direct uh, parent, if you like, of the UN SDGs. Um, but of course, since then, we we realize, particularly over the last couple of years with the extreme weather events we're, we're getting is that we are crossing climate tipping points. So um, yeah, we things are very serious and I think we're really living on borrowed time. 
So we're going to have to rapidly um, uh, create resilient regenerative uh, communities. Uh, um, so uh, the platform, um, we hope the One Planet platform can help communities self-organize, work more cooperatively um, with local government as well and with businesses. Um, and what's the new thinking that will help us deal with this reality? Well, we really are tearing our hair out trying to deal with issues in, in silos, in isolation. And uh, it's almost, it feels as though sometimes whoever shouts loudest this month gets a policy or strategy, um, if I'm not being too, too rude, to keep them quiet. And then whoever shouts loudest next month gets another policy or strategy. But I'm not sure those really link up together to give us joined up solutions. And instead of that, can we get out of the weeds of dealing with issues in silos and um, uh, sit up above that, at least for, for a moment, look at, okay, what are the outcomes we want to achieve? How do they fit together? How does health support the economies, um, support um, uh, um, tackling net zero, uh, support uh, regenerative food systems? You know, how can we join all the dots so that we can be more coherent in our planning and then more joined up in our um, in our actions? And so that's how we've created the One Planet platform. So very simply, we can take any policy, strategy, plan or project, break it down into its building blocks or atomic structure of outcomes, what you want to achieve, actions, how you're going to achieve them, indicators, what you might track. Then you can see how these link together within a plan to make sure they're coherent. But because we can do that for any number of policy, strategies, plans or projects, um, we get them in there the same format, if you like, so we can connect them all together. Um, uh, and then when they're connected together, you can see where the synergies are, where the conflicts are, um, see where the shared outcomes are, and collaborate in what we call ecosystems around shared outcomes, uh, so that we can break down the traditional silos of departments within organizations, say in local government, um, or in, in private companies and large companies, often different departments not working in a as joined up a way as they could, but also between organizations. So different organizations can collaborate on shared outcomes um, uh, um, and different sectors as well. So uh, we're very excited um, at the, the, the way we're starting to help people join the dots and, and collaborate in this way. And um, the mind maps as we've got in our system, are very good for planning, getting that overview. But when you come to implementing, you really might just want a list of tasks. Um, so it automatically converts um, uh, yeah, the mind map into lists. And if you update any one of those, it uh, automatically keeps the other, um, the other um, way of viewing the data uh, um, updated. We can create reports across whole ecosystems of actors. So not just necessarily in your own organization in, and it's all dynamic. Um, and we can also publish online in real time. So you can share what you're doing in real time and uh, with your partners or with the public. Um, we're particularly uh, um, working with uh, local government at the moment, but also with community groups and, and with businesses. So we're very, you know, we're very excited by all the um, climate emergency centers uh, being set up, not least in Worthing, with the cruise center there. Unfortunately, uh, Pauline, who um, was going to join us today, who's with Transition Town Worthing, um, who has created a, a community action map, which I will show you um, um, using our system, which is displayed within the climate emergency center in, in Worthing. She couldn't join us because she's on holiday, but also we've got Donna, uh, who's uh, set up a, a climate and well-being centre called the Bridges, uh, Building Bridges Hub in Maidenhead. Um, uh, uh, she's also using our system. And we're starting to link these mind maps actually to geographic maps as well, so that we can start placing um, actions onto, uh, onto a geographic map. So uh, linking conceptual maps, if you like, with geographic maps. Um, and, and my colleague Peter is on the call today and We've got a whole community partnership program building now, a number of different members on that. And Peter will say a few words about anyone who wants to, uh, who's interested in that. We offer free systems to community groups. Uh, we're also starting to work with consultants who want to help their clients, whether in local government or in business, uh, start using this sort of platform to help them uh, 
uh, increase their uh, their sustainability and start join linking them in, particularly into uh, uh, with local communities and with local government. Um, so that's what I wanted to share in terms of slides, and I will um, I will also just briefly share online uh, if I can get to it. It's a bit hard to navigate on this. I've got. Uh, can I? Let me get rid of that, put that there, and then um, let's have a look. Oh. Um, here on our on our platform, for example, Transition Town Worthing have published their community uh, um, action uh, plan here, and we can just click on here. I'm hoping when I'm sharing, it will open up. Um, if you fast, they this is displayed within the Climate Resilience Centre in in Worthing. Um, might just take a sec to load while we're while I'm sharing, but we worked with them to take all the sorts of actions you can uh, you can take in Worthing to um, to respond to climate change um, in various themes based on the Ten One Planet Living principles. Um, which include things like zero carbon, zero waste, um, sustainable water, land and nature. And those are mapped now as actions you can take. So if I, uh, for example, zoom in, you can see here on, um, you know, where can you volunteer? And there are a number of different places uh, you can volunteer, including things like the uh, Green Dreams um, Festival, you can explore this map when you go into the cruise center, the, the climate emergency center. I am just, this is, I'm just going to hide all this first and just show, you can explore it, for example, just um, section by section. For example, we can look at zero waste here. If I zoom in a bit more, you can see the core action here is to reduce, reuse, recycle, repurpose. And you can start seeing all the actions you can take, um, all the organizations uh, you can um, access to help you in this way. And I'll just open one of those, for example, Compost Club, which is a green waste um, recycling service. They convert it into compost and then uh, sell it back to the community, set up composting sites. Um, that's run by a great young entrepreneur called Mike Kennard. And here you can find out a bit more about it by clicking on this, but also you can just click here and uh, it'll automatically go to his mind map. Might just take a sec. Let's just open that. So you can go and see how you can get involved in recycling green waste, but you can find out more about his company and his service. So, for example, how he's offering a green service. But how is that, um, you know, uh, or a waste service? But uh, you know, what vehicles is he using? Is he getting renewable energy? How's he? Is he paying a, um, a living wage, for example? And you can explore all of that. So, for example, you can see under transport, uh, you can go here, and we can see. Oh, this is just going to. I just need to move this. Come on. I can't. You're on mute, Kieran. Yeah. Okay. I um yeah, the zoom navigation bar is in the wrong place. Let me move that. But we can just look, he can add stories, for example. And so here he's uh, got an update to say, welcome to our new um EV. We're now collecting food waste emissions free. So we can all find out more about what each other is doing, look at the opportunities to collaborate, and in that way, hopefully create. Um, what's increasingly being known as a, a regenerative economy. Um, uh, so being moving beyond sustainable, because actually we now need to regenerate the living systems on which we depend. So that's just a brief um, a brief run through on the platform. We're very happy to share more, but uh, perhaps I can hand over to, um, uh, I, I think I was going to hand over to Helen. Is that right, Carrie? To yes, please. To words and then, and, yes, and, please. And then to Pete. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, my name's Helen Peacock. I'm from Horsham District Council. I'm the Environment Programme Manager. 
Um, so fortunately, I, 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 hopefully my slides don't sort of um, overlap too much with, with Poran's. Um, so I'll just start sharing my screen. Hopefully you can see that okay. So just, just a quick background really. We can't where... see it yet, Helen. Can you not? Okay. I, I can't. Let's try again. There we go. That's working. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. Right. So, as I say, just a little bit of background. Um, we've been putting together, working with a, a consultancy known as Useful Projects, but also with, with One Planet, um, a draft climate action strategy. Um, and when we were putting this together, um, we realised that really, basically, the sort of principles that Paran has, has been talking about. So I, I won't sort of go over that again. But realising that, um, you know, it isn't, for example, just the council that can move the district to, you know, climate neutrality, climate resilience, um, and actually the larger, the larger strategy also shows the connections through to the, the 10 um, UN sustainable development principles as well. So just to give you a snapshot in terms of the, of the draft strategy, I won't go into the detail in terms of the, um, the actual structure really, but the governance um, policies, the sort of enablers that build that capacity um, so that we can actually move on to, to other actions. Um, and then the system side of it, um, which is fairly traditional um, sort of thing that Poran was just talking about around land use, buildings, energy, transport, waste. We've integrated um, climate resilience throughout that. It also includes obviously things like resource use and, and water as well within those themes. Um, I think the, the main thing to draw from this really is, is those three delivery routes that we've um, identified. Again, not particularly revolutionary, but it is really just demonstrating that although the council is obviously, it does have a pivotal role, we are not the only um, organisation and we will not be able to achieve all of this acting alone. Obviously, um, organisations, we're very lucky to have Sussex Green Living in our area, for example, um, but we also have other lots, lots of other interested um, and active community groups as well, and indeed businesses. Um, so in terms of the way that the delivery routes have been put together, the strategy shows um, where, where it's seen as the council taking more of a leadership role, and a good example of that is through the local plan. And there's also partnerships where, again, the council will need to work with other organisations um, and indeed other organisations themselves working in partnership. Um, and finally, of, but not least, is community um, groups and generally the community and the role that they need to play in terms of moving us forward in terms of this agenda. Um, and that's really that sort of thought process um, that was in my mind when we also reached out to, to, to One Planet. I'd seen a, a presentation, I don't know if it was Bob by Poran, I think actually it was Ben who we've been working with that works for One Planet. Um, and it just struck me that, you know, that, that useful tool in terms of using that particularly mind map. I mean, I, I'm a local government officer, so, you know, I get drowned in, in tables, basically, you know, that's, that's often the way that information is presented, it has its benefits, but I think when you're dealing, as Poran has said, with these complex and interlinking issues, it's really beneficial to see it demonstrated in a different way. Um, so what we've got, the point that we've got to so far, um, and we're still very much a work in progress, um, is in terms of looking at the strategies One Planet started to, uh, or have already mapped, the strategy, key strategies that the council already has, and this is helping us to identify, you know, where 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 those overlaps are in terms of shared outcomes from departments across the council, um, but also possibly where there's um, gaps as well, and that's something that therefore that we need to work on as an organisation. The other aspect to this that's happened so far, um, we worked up to this point just with some key stakeholders. Um, and in actual fact, not all of the ones listed there, we, we necessarily worked with actually looking at those we did. Um, but again, this was a way to demonstrate that some of these key partners that we've reached out to were Sussex County Council being the most obvious one because we're a, a two tier authority. So where Sussex sit above us. So they have a lot of responsibility in terms of transport and, and waste. So that's outside our direct control. So we will need to work very collaboratively with them and in partnership. 
um, and actually they've also got a really good um, energy energy team and they've developed an energy strategy. But there's also other other active players in the area, Southern Water, um, and I'm not saying that this is a comprehensive list and this is basically an area where we now need to start building up those links. And I was absolutely delighted to hear when Ben was saying that um, One Planet have started to work with South Downs National Park Authority. Um, I, and so, that, you know, that's another, um, obviously we overlap with the South Downs area. So, you know, I'm hopeful that that again will engender sort of more collaborative and, and shared outcomes basically. Um, I won't I won't repeat this too much, but this is um, how how One Planet have put together um, those um, different strategies from other organisations. Um, so I think it, it shows it from a sort of different different lens from what Poran's just shown in terms of the community side. So it's really just to show you that it works at different different levels in a way. Um, so these are these are some of the the, the strategies from some of the other organisations. And as I say, I wouldn't claim that this is comprehensive but we needed to make a start somewhere. And it starts to show um, the linkages. And this is just one snapshot around net zero carbon, uh, sorry, zero carbon economy. There are obviously others as well, uh, which again link back as Poran showed in, in his, his demonstration. Um, this gives you again, just a snapshot because we're still very much in the process of building up um, our strategy or the strategy on, on one planet um, platform but it gives you an indication. So you can see um, on the one side, the colors there, they're, they're all of the key areas from, from the strategy um, and they've been mapped onto the One Planet platform. So we can now see where they link um, together. And again, as Poran was demonstrating, I've just taken a snapshot to zoom in because I have all sorts of trouble when I'm trying to, <laughs> when I'm trying to use this, but I'm doing it live. So I thought I'd chicken out and just use a screenshot. I'm not quite as brave as Boran, obviously, um, but it, it just shows you here. Um, these, so the circles that you're seeing here, the large circles, those are the outcomes and the hexagons are the actions. What we're doing at the moment, working with Poran's colleagues is building up those indicators as well. Um, we've got to set a draft at the moment and we're, we're, going, we're going to be looking through those. And, and obviously that's an important way of us being able to, to monitor the plan. Um, but what we will also obviously want to, want to do and hopefully we'll be able to do moving forward and this is why it's great to have this opportunity this evening is obviously that community side and that's the aspect that we we haven't done yet and we will be doing more of that over the summer and that will be um the start it's we don't see that as being the end of the process so this just gives us another way of being able to visualize um you know the strategy and then hopefully how we can demonstrate how others are are also linking into to the strategy basically so in terms of the next steps for us, um, you know, we, we, we're exploring again with Ben the potential of using the mind map as part of that engagement process. I understand that Enfield, one of the other local authorities that One Planet have, have worked with, did do that. So that's something that we want to explore. As I mentioned, we're also working on a set of indicators that will, will form part of the strategy as, in terms of that monitoring process. Um, Again, one of the strengths I felt with, with the platform is, you know, we, we are a local authority, so we do love to monitor things and it is very important that we do so, but it's also important for us to be producing, you know, progress reports, both internally, but also for the wider community to see, you know, how everyone, all of us that are involved in this progress, involved in this project, if you like, um, the progress that we're all collaboratively making. Um, and as I say, coming back to that last point, really, and I think this is something obviously that the Poran's just demonstrated from both angles, is, is that aspect of how everyone is can contribute to, to moving all of these really important aspects forward. Um, we see this very much as a, as a starting point. However, having said that, there is awful, already an awful lot of activity going on. We're conscious of that in terms of the community. Um, and we want to be able to work and, and demonstrate how all of those things can interlink um, with the strategy that's been produced. It is by no means the only one. Um, obviously, we've got other elements such as um, economic development, for example, and we'll be working with colleagues. At the moment, there is a bit of a gap, um, I have to say, and that's come, that, that's come to light very much through the process that we've done with this. It's enabled us to work with other departments um, in terms of putting the strategy together. Um, we've worked with most of the departments across our council, actually, and that's been a really important process in terms of getting some buy-in. 
um, demonstrating what the strategy is all about. Um, and, and again, it will, that, that will be part of an engagement process actually with our own, or within our own organization. Um, you know, we, we have lots of different responsibilities as a local authority, but what we need to try and do is try and ensure that we're, we're sort of pointing all of our strategies and policies in the right sort of direction. And in some areas, I'm sure that will take more time than others. Um, but this, this is a really powerful tool to be able to show those linkages, basically. So, um, as I say, we're very much a work in progress at this point, um, but hopefully that's given you an idea of, of how a local authority is using, is using the One Planet, One Planet platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Helen. That's a really um, great overview. Um, can we hand over to Peter, who works on community partnerships for One Planet, please? And then we'll do Q&A at the end, if that's all right. Yeah, no problem. I don't have any slides. I'm just going to speak to the community partnership offering. I think you've probably seen enough slides now to understand what One Planet is, is about. Um, and it's really fantastic to see you know, the, the actual platform being put into practice there with, with Helen. Um, in response to an increasing number of local organisations, community groups that were approaching One Planet to use the platform, uh, it seemed like a, a missed opportunity in terms of being able to work with them. Obviously, there's a, there's a cost in working with One Planet, and there's quite a lot of resource and time that goes into developing those mind maps and ecosystems. So we developed a community partnership offering, which essentially gives all of the uh, best um, tools and services from One Planet to community groups for free, building essentially a mutual relationship, which enables those community groups to create an ecosystem and show how they're delivering impact to things like the climate emergency uh, locally. Um, Obviously, you're leaps and bounds ahead here because the, one of the points of that is to try to encourage the local authority to adopt new ways of working and be forward thinking. So here, you know, you're leaps and bounds ahead because obviously the local authority has already adopted this way of working to some degree. So, um, but we, you know, it's still something that we can benefit from. As you saw there from Helen's presentation, you've got the three different sort of stakeholder types or levels, uh, leadership, partners and community. And there's obviously a lot of community groups that are already delivering on uh, and, and contributing to the strategic plans, not just of the local council, but obviously of the other major stakeholders in the area, like the health authority, health board or the university. So through this community partnership, essentially we can create an ecosystem and the local community groups then can show which shared outcomes they're already contributing to with a view to then trying to demonstrate that and um, provide evidence of shared working and, and collaboration framework for collaboration going forward as an example incredible edible in lambeth which is probably a bit of that initiative you know, they're doing an awful lot of green projects green space projects in the area and a lot of those initiatives are already in the lambeth council plan but there's no joined up working there there's no recognition and there's no support at the moment which is obviously really frustrating and i'm sure a lot of you local community groups can resonate with that issue so that's the uh, opportunity i'll put uh, a link into the chat which says a little bit more about it and then if you're interested in participating uh, and creating an action plan of your own on the platform that we can then link up to the local authorities climate action plan and all the shared outcomes with a view to trying to then view the common outcomes and actions as a framework for collaboration going forward, then go ahead and fill in that form. And um, you know that, that we'll, we'll be creating quite an innovative um, piece of work here because you're already way ahead, you know, with the work that uh, Helen's doing. Paul, oh, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, thanks, uh, uh, Pete, for that. And uh, this is, uh, uh, well, Sussex Live. I know we got some people from Surrey as well in the wider Sussex. So uh, we want to work with other district councils, other county councils as well. So, um, yeah, Portram are, uh, um, um, you yeah, know, it's fantastic. Uh, Helen has taken this on and we can look at uh, connecting in more 
um, those organizations which are in Horsham, but we're looking for other district councils as well, um, and also linking in with the South Downs National Park. Uh, so we've got a pilot with them, three month pilot, um, Lewis uh, District Council, a part of that, um, uh, Ouse Valley um, Energy Services Company, a number of different partners, and we're going to be connecting in about 25 different organizations in the South Downs to pilot an ecosystem there, which then we'll look at uh, rolling out wider, not just in the national park, and, um, but out to all the district councils which contribute to the national park, but then also to all the national parks in the UK as well. So it's, uh, um, yeah, it, this, is, uh, this is for any district council. And when community groups are mapping that, some of those are already presenting those to their local councils. And um, uh, so for, for us, it's a great way. We have to generate some income for this. So uh, the, um, uh, uh, it's a way for community groups to map what the council is doing, but then also for um, us to then say to the council, look, here's an opportunity for you to be more joined up. So start using our platform. We can start joining all the dots in order to create a regenerative future. Um, so yeah, we'll be exploring that with Helen in the in the coming months as well, but with other district councils, county council as well, so and national park. So thanks, Pete, for that, and thanks, Helen, for sharing what you're doing as well. Thank you so much, um, Peter and uh, Puran and Helen. Um, I think we'll stop the recording at this point um, and open up the yeah any questions for.